You guys remember my reaction when I when I uh, opened up my SZ for the first time? This is like the same thing. Woo! Look at that baby. Guys, I just got home. Oh, what's up guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Yeah, you know. I just got home. Ignore all those boxes. Those are foam sticks and stuff. But look what just got here. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Ah! So at Mobile Beat Las Vegas 23, if you guys haven't seen those videos, links like right there, right there, whatever. Go check them out. Um, I got to get my hands on the Denon Prime 4. I spent like a good 30 minutes playing around with this thing and checking it out. And this thing is dope. Like it, it is sweet. It's so cool. It's like a standalone. It's literally like... It's, it's literally a mixer, like a DJ mixer, and a laptop in one. You can install, like, a actual hard drive into this thing and store all your music on it. Like, this thing is sweet, so I want to just dive right on into it, and uh, let's unbox this thing. Let's get on into this unboxing, and let's see what we got, so... This, this is actually a big box compared to what I thought it would be. So we open the cover. Oh my god, is this a poster? I'm not sure this comes with every one of these, but check that out. That is lit. All right, get into it. Uh, we got a random piece of styrofoam. We got the power cable because you know you need got to power stuff with something. Yeah, shut it down below here. I'm trying to get the stuff underneath the cable first. There's a package. This looks like it be the manual. Got a blue a blue um, cable for your laptop, and we got the cover for the screen. Interesting, the cover doesn't come on the screen already. Maybe this is an extra cover, but this is the cover, Denon Prime, that goes over the, um, the screen on the Denon DJ. Four screws, not really sure what the four screws are for, maybe to hold the hard drive. So I'm gonna try to do this. Very dangerous, do not do this at home, kids. Check it. This is like Christmas all over again. You guys remember my reaction when I when I uh, opened up my SZ for the first time? This is like the same thing. It's like a kid in a candy store. Woo! Look at that baby. Size-wise, this is literally like the same size as the Pioneer DDJ SZ. But man, this thing looks cool. Yeah, so the screen cover does not come on it. That's interesting. You put it on after the fact. Hmm. Cool, cool. That's it. That, that's, that's pretty much the unboxing. Oh, I love the sound of that. I do like the fact that these are soft touch buttons. Um, nice fader, very loose fader. I like that. Obviously, you can tighten it up. But the, they're, they're soft touch buttons, not the click type buttons. I don't like the click type buttons. Very similar layout to the SZ or an SX2. So, actually, no, I take that back. Size wise, it's like similar to an SX2. There's a lot of room in between the faders though down here. That's very interesting. Yeah, but this thing's dope. Let's, uh, let's get a little closer. And here it is. Check out the reflection on the big 10 inch touch screen. Uh, we're gonna dive into the features. I'm gonna walk through everything that's on here, but um, this is boring. It's just not plugged in and everything. So I went and grabbed the table. Let's set it up. Let's plug it in. Let's see what this thing looks like because it is sick. We're, we're all hooked up, ready to go. Let's press the power button. Let's turn it on. Here we go. This is going to be the same time you get to see my impression at the same time here. Yeah, that's lit. So, it says on the screen, this is for beta version, this is not for live scenario, so, interesting. Let me take you on a quick tour of like what all the ports and everything is on the outside of this thing, and then I'm going to have to get uh, my flash drive, and uh, I haven't downloaded the Prime engine yet, so I got to download that, get some music onto a flash drive, plug it in, and let's see what this thing can do. But, um, let's go through what all is on the outside first. Okay, so starting on the top. You're greeted with that massive 10 inch touchscreen, complete touchscreen, high definition display. You have different tilt options so you can lay it down all the way if you want. You can go all the way down if you want or you can put it all the way up at a pretty steep angle. Coming down from the touchscreen we have 
are center controls. So this is how you can interact with the touchscreen if you don't want to use the touchscreen. You select songs through here. You can push in to select. You can load right. You can load left. You can forward. Not really sure what that does yet. Back. Um, just your general navigations. View. You can change your view so you can quickly go back and forth between your library and the mixing screen. Down from there, we have a true four channel mixer, high, mid, low on all four channels, plus an effects knob that um, does a sweep effect from standard apparently. Uh, you have your Q buttons that uh, get brighter if they're on and dimmer if they're off. Headphone controls are in the center between your Q and your mix and your headphone level. And you have split control, so you can split it between Q and master, so like your left headphone will be uh, Q and your right headphone will be master. And down below we have the control for those sweep effects knobs, so you can do filter, echo, wash, and noise. Then you got your standard four channel mixer, left, right, and through controls on all four. You have your fader, which is a very loose, very nice sliding fader. Both decks have a complete effects array here at the top with built-in effects on the Prime 4. You can do all of your parametrics, your wet, dry, all that fun stuff for you guys that love to mess around with effects. They got it. Up here in the corner, we have our loop in and out controls. We have slip mode, slip mode, turn it on and off. You got vinyl mode, vinyl mode, on and off. Key lock, you can turn key lock on and off. Your pitch fader, and uh, it does not actually click like some of the pioneers. You gotta look for that light, so that light tells you it's in the center. We got these awesome jaw wheels, which are very similar in size to like an SX2. Um, and it's kind of cool, it's reactive, so like when you touch it, the color changes. And I'm pretty sure you can customize in the software what color that is. You can also customize what is displayed here in the center. You can have the BPM or you can have your logo, which I personally think putting your logo there is a dope idea. Deck 1, Deck 3 controls, your sensor reverse button, always important when you're doing stuff. Instead of like a track selector, obviously you can also do it on the touchscreen, but you have a track skip right here if you want to quickly pan through the song. You can do beat jumps, beat jump back and forth. Sync, no one ever uses that, so we'll skip that. Q, play. Like I said, these are four soft touch buttons. They're not actually click buttons. They're just soft touch buttons, similar to what you find on Pioneer DDJ SX2s, SZs, etc. Hot cues, loops, rolls, and slicers. Got your shift knob right here, beat grid, and your parameters. Same thing over on this deck as well, except it's two and four. And you can swap around on here to go between two and four. Probably some of the coolest stuff, no, by far some of the coolest stuff is up here in these top two panels on both sides. So on the left hand side you have your mic one and mic two on, off, the button gets a little bit brighter when it's on, talk over, you have your level controls, three band EQ on mic one, two band EQ on mic two, echo on both, Mic echo on, mic echo off. On the right hand side, you have your master volume. You also have the two additional zone outs. So you have zone out, which is just a general output. You have high and mid low controls on it. You can select channel assigned, so you can select exactly what channels you want to run out to the zone out. That's all in the system that we'll dive into eventually. And you have your booth out. Um, pretty dope stuff. You got an SD card slot here if you want to pop an SD in and you have two USBs right here on top of the controller as well. And below that is the other effects queue. Moving to the front of the Prime 4 we have both quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks to plug in your headphones. Pan and past that we have the USB and line controls for each channel to select if you want to do USB or you want to do line which there are line RCA inputs on the back if you just want to run this as a dedicated mixer. Then lastly on the front here we have our fader controls. How you want your fader to be either quick or generally like a crossover and your fader start right and start left controls. Coming around to the back, we have probably the most amount of ports I have ever seen on any controller, like period. So, starting off, you have microphones, both XLR and quarter inch combined inputs for both one 
and two, not just one of them, both of them. You have your uh, RCA inputs for all four of the channels if you wish to do so. You can switch between line and phono on two of those. Moving past that, we come into probably my favorite part of the Denon Prime 4, and that is the amount of output control you have. You have master both RCA and XLR. You can switch between stereo and mono, just a switch right here, quick and easy. You have your booth out XLR and you have your zone out XLR, giving you three different channels of output. That's awesome. You have a link out here, two more USB ports, and a USB B plug right there as well. And can't forget the big power button. One additional thing I can't skip over is the fact that you can install a laptop hard drive into this controller as big as you want like up to two terabytes i think maybe even four terabytes so that is actually on the bottom of this so uh, all you do is unscrew those four screws right there and you can install a standard laptop computer hard drive so now i'm going to get onto my computer and download the prime software and get some music onto one of my flash drives and get it plugged into this thing and let's see what this puppy can do and let's check out all the menus and check out all the quirks and amazing features on the Prime 4 standalone DJ controller. Alrighty, what's up everyone? Obviously, it has been a few days um, since I first unboxed the Denon Prime 4. I've been playing around with it a lot lately, uh, doing a lot of um, practice mixing for uh, my upcoming prom season uh, with the tracks and stuff that I'm going to be playing at prom on the Prime 4. No, I'm not going to be using the Prime 4 um, only because the software that is currently on the Prime 4, this will probably change by the time this video gets out, hopefully. Uh, but right now, it's still beta. So the Prime 4 is technically still, the software is in beta. So I, um, it, it's actually recommended not to use it in a live scenario yet until they have the official software out. Which, once this is finally released, will be the official software. Besides it being in beta, it is absolutely sick. Like, it's awesome. It, I, I have, this is like... I come home from work and like I, I literally jump on this for like an hour and I have so much fun mixing on this thing. It's 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 freaking awesome. One of my favorite things though about the Denon Prime 4 that I've messed with so far, besides the fact that you don't need a laptop, um, all of my music is literally on this 128 gigabyte uh, flash drive right here with uh, my little Samsung right there. Plugged in the USB 2, I could have put in USB 1, or I could put it in USB 3 or 4. <laughs> But my favorite feature is by far the customization that you can do with this thing. So uh, let me show you a little bit of the customizations that you can do and that I've done to this thing. So obviously the first thing is you can set up your logo or whatever picture you want in the center of the jog wheels. Now, how do you do that? It's actually very simple. So whatever flash drive you're using, all you need to do is take your logo and create it into like a 640 by 640 like square PNG image and name it logo, no caps, no nothing, logo.png and put it inside of your engine prime folder. And then once you plug it in, it loads right up. It's pretty simple. And if you guys need a more in detail video on how you do that, just let me know. But besides that, you can also customize these jog wheel colors. So if you see right here, this and this is actually a cool thing, right? Right now they're white which indicates no music is playing. So it's really cool, I think. So when I uh, up the volume on this deck, it turns red. So I have it set to be a red deck. And then over here, obviously, when I turn it, it'll be a blue deck. And then obviously when you grab it, it turns white as well. So that's kind of cool that they allow you to customize the colors. 
And the way you do that is through the menu system. So you hold down view here and you go to preferences. And there's all kinds of settings in here. But again, I'm not going to go through that in this video because this is the beta version. Some of this stuff will change. But here at the bottom, you can customize the color that you want deck 2 to be. So if I want deck 2 to be yellow, it can be yellow. If I want it to be green, it can be green. If I want it to be orange, it can be orange. Uh, light blue, turquoise, or dark blue, or purple, you, you, you name it. You can customize it any color in this little rainbow sequence. I like red on my right deck and blue on my left deck. That's just what I did. And then fourth deck, I made... Uh, orange and purple is on the deck three over here not that I ever use four decks really but it's another cool thing it actually updates numbers in the center there you can see like four two and one kind of gives you a little <laughs> reference of what you're doing let's talk about the touchscreen so far the touchscreen is awesome like it's super responsive it literally feels like I'm just pl like it feels like an iPad it feels like an iPad a smartphone it's very fluent it's very easy I thought it would be really hard to get used to like scrolling through songs on here and using the keyboard to search for songs, but really it, it was pretty easy and pretty quick to get used to it. Um, and all of my playlists are right here, so I can go to my crates, I can go to my bar list, and uh, that's the only list I have on here, but all your playlists will be in here. And you set all the music up on your laptop using their uh, Engine Prime software. so. Really cool, and the swap between views, you can use the view button to switch between that. You can run four decks, uh, I normally run two decks, so that's why it looks like two decks. Another thing I really got used to real quick was just using this center dial right here to scroll through songs, and then if I wanna load it, I can just click the load right button, or I can click the load left button to load it onto the left deck. Um, that got really easy to use um, as well. So these are just some of the quirks and stuff that I really found really useful and stuff that I liked on this. And another one of those useful little quirks is the fact that the Q buttons are also color coordinated to those decks. So deck blue, deck blue, and it gets a little bit brighter when you want to get on that deck. Um, just little hints like that that's really cool that they're color coordinated. Also when you're playing music um, the fact that the color waveforms are green and then when you get up into the the bad parts um, it gets into the white and then all the way up is blue showing you that you're peaking too hard so that's kind of cool it's a little more distinguishable when you go from green to a white um, the C instead of like a green to a yellow to a red couple other things that I really enjoyed using on this is the loop feature on here it's just simple it's in and then out and then you can make the loop bigger or smaller However you want, just using the little jaw wheel. I thought that was very clean and very simple to use um, compared to other loop features that I've used before. Then one other thing I thought was really cool is um, the track skip button right here. So you obviously don't want to use this in the middle of playing a song, but uh, if you are running like a set, like say this is like your set and you already have a preset of what you're going to play, you just press that track skip button and it'll load the next song. You can press it on this deck over here, it'll load the next song. Um, it's really cool. It's a really handy feature that you can just go through your chain really quick by pressing the track skip buttons right there. So overall guys, this has just been like an unboxing, uh, showing you all the features of the Prime 4 and uh, giving you guys a little bit of feedback on my first impressions now that I had probably about 10 hours now worth playing around with the unit and I gotta say I'm very impressed and um, I didn't think uh, when I first started playing with this I'm like there's no way I could ever see myself switching over to only using this as my like DJ, like no laptop, none of that. And honestly, I could do it. As long as I get all my music organized properly on here, um, I, I literally don't think I'd have any problem DJing off of this instead of running off of like a laptop with Serato and using a controller. So that's really awesome. Uh, the one quirk I do want them, and I hope it comes in the actual software uh, right now you can only use horizontal waveforms I really hope they have the vertical layout when they finally release the software because as you guys probably have seen when I use Serato I use the vertical layout that's just what I'm used to that's what I'm comfortable with so getting used to the horizontal layout took a little bit of time um, and I'm still fudging around and messing up because I'm looking at the, the layout and it's screwing me up. But like I said guys, that software, this is a beta software. Uh, when the official software comes out and it's going to be compatible with Serato and Virtual DJ. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how they integrate that because um, for weddings, I that's the one area I'm 
not 100% comfortable with not using a laptop is doing weddings because weddings there's such a variety of music so that's the one area that I would be worried about trying to do. But yeah guys if you like this video you like the Denon Prime 4 in the studio check it out give this video a big thumbs up if you're not already subscribed be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to help support the channel there's a link to the Patreon down below and like always guys my name is EJ Rick Webb keep the records spinning and I will see you guys next time with another amazing awesome video Peace.